We're going to sing my Redeemer. He lives forevermore. I know he rescued my soul. His blood has covered my sin. I believe. I believe. My shame he's taken away. My pain is healed in his name. I believe. I believe. Come on, let's raise the banner. I'll raise a banner. My Lord has conquered the grave. My Redeemer lives. My Redeemer lives. My Redeemer lives. My Redeemer lives. I know, I know he rescued my soul. His blood has covered my sin. I believe, I believe. My shame he's taken away. My pain is healed in his name. I believe, I believe. I'll raise a banner. My Lord has conquered the grave. My Redeemer lives. Yes, you do, Lord. My Redeemer lives. My Redeemer lives. My Redeemer lives. Let's sing that again. My Redeemer. My Redeemer lives. My Redeemer lives. My Redeemer lives, my Redeemer lives, you lift my burden, I'll rise with you, I'm dancing on this mountain top to see your kingdom come, my Redeemer lives. 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 You lift. You lift my burden. I'll rise with you. I'm dancing on this mountain top to see your kingdom come. Let's see this. Uh, my Redeemer lives. My Redeemer lives. Oh, my Redeemer lives. 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 My Redeemer. Let's see that again. My Redeemer. My Redeemer lives. My Redeemer lives. My Redeemer lives. My Redeemer lives. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord, we worship you, God. Praise your name, God. Hallelujah, Lord. Lord, we lift you up, God, higher than hell. Lord, higher than the things that have happened in our week, Lord. Lord, we lift you higher than the circumstances that drag us down sometimes. Lord, we lift you up high, God, because you deserve to be lifted high, and we worship you today. Hallelujah. Great are you, Lord. Lord, you are so great. God, we pour ourselves out to you this evening. Hallelujah, Lord.
You give life. You are love. You bring light to the darkness. You give hope. You restore every heart that is broken let's sing that again you you bring life you are love you give life to the darkness you give hope you restore every heart that is broken great are you lord it's your breath it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise we pour out our praise it's your in our lungs so we pour out our praise to you only you are love you are life you bring light to the darkness you give hope you restore every heart that is broken oh great are you lord let's see this it's your breath it's your breath in our so we pour out our praise, we pour out our praise, it's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you only, it's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise, we pour out our praise, it's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you only, Lord. Let's sing this, all the earth will shout your praise. Oh, all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry. These bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. Come on, let's lift our hands as we sing this, all the earth. All the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry. These bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. God, we lift our voice to you today. All the earth, all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry. These bones will sing. Great are you. in our lungs so we pour out our praise we pour out our praise it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise to you only it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise we pour out our praise it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise to you only lord
Father, we just love tonight. We thank you for every person that's here. We thank you for your word that's going to go forth today. We thank you, Father. We just cast all our care upon you. Whether we've had a good week or a bad week, Father, we, 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 we cast our care upon you for you care for us. We thank you for your goodness and your love, your peace, your kindness. We thank you for the opportunity we have today to worship a one true and living God. We love you with all our heart. We thank you for every person that's here. In Jesus' most precious name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Well, say hi to somebody next to you if you would. Be so kind and you may be seated. Can I be turned down a little bit? I'm too loud. So welcome to Wednesday. Welcome to Wednesday. And it is our second Wednesday back and it's uh, just... Uh, I love midweek service. I was telling, um, I was telling George, you know, I I grew up, and that's just what we did. We went to church on Sunday and Wednesday, and um, and so we thank God that you're here, and uh, and and oh, what a blessing it is. Hey, let, I got a praise report. You want to hear a praise report? Yeah. And I know, uh, yeah, thank you, George. That's great. So uh, we are, um, man. I'm so proud of you guys. We're up to. Over thirty thousand dollars raised. That's your project. And I saw that today, and I just thought, "Oh my goodness!" I, I you know, I'm, you know, I'm gonna wait. No, I'm not gonna wait. I gotta share it with the Wednesday people because they need to know. So, um, but the main thing I just want to say is thank you, thank you, thank you. You're so generous, and and what a uh, what a privilege it is to be part of the solution. Somebody say, "I'm part of the solution." Okay. And a lot of people aren't part of the solution. They're part of the problem. And, and I need to be turned down again. Somebody turn me back up. So uh, the, uh, part, sometimes part of the problem is that you're not part of the solution. Does that make sense? And see, um, corporately, we're all responsible for, um, for getting Pico Rivera saved and a place, a good church where they can come, amen, and be outside, hallelujah. Can you say hallelujah to that? Okay, and, um, and I love being outside. But uh, what a blessing it is that, that you can come and you can hear the word of God. And every time you come, how many know you're going to hear the word of God? How many know if you have kids or grandkids, they're going to hear the word of God? You know what? They're, I mean, they might be having fun over there, but at the end of the day, they're also going to learn about Jesus Christ, Amen. I mean, no, the, the world needs Jesus Christ today. There's so much junk. Jesus needs to be preached. And they're getting that, wow, hear them? They're getting that in the kids' ministry, but they're getting that in junior high, high school ministry. You know, I don't know what, what's over, how many people were over there last week, but 64 uh, people were in Sozo last week. Hallelujah. That's just huge. That's just, you know, um, Amen. So we thank God for it. And, and part of that is your financial support. So we just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. Don't grow weary in doing good. Whatever the Holy Spirit has laid on your hearts. You know what? For some of you, God is laying on your hearts. You, you, you know what? I want you to give a certain amount until we have, until we reach our goal. And, and so, I'm, you know, so just be obedient. You know what? We're going we're gonna to look in the Word today, and it's going to be good. Tamara and I are grateful that you're here tonight. Father, we just thank you for your goodness, your kindness, your joy, your peace, all your wonderful gifts. We thank you for the opportunity we have to preach the word, Father. We thank you that um, you're so faithful to us, and we thank you that we're happy, hilarious, cheerful givers. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Let's stand up to our feet. Sing it with me. Praise Him. Praise Him. I just want to lift my voice and sing. He's worthy. So I'll praise His holy name. He is amazing. In all that He's done for me. His words everlasting. 
He'll never lie to me. So praise his name. Lift up his holy name. Lift up his holy name. Lift up his holy name. Let's try it again. Sing it. Praise him. Praise him. I just want to lift my voice and say he's worthy. So I'll praise his holy name. He is amazing in all that he's done for me. His words everlasting. He'll never lie to me. So praise his name. Lift up his holy name. Lift up his holy name. Lift up his holy name. Father, we just raise up the tithes and offerings. We thank you for the opportunity we have to give. We give to you with a happy, hilarious heart. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Happy Wednesday. Hey, how many are happy today? Amen. Praise the Lord. Yeah, I had a good day at work. I had a hard, productive day at work. Like, that was good, man. We got things done, and I love it, man. You know, I was, I was just happy. I'm driving by, and I, you know what? God is so good because, I mean, I remember when I would drive and I would see a cop. I'd be so oh, dang, you know what I mean? Because I, I, was, I, was, I had to abide by the law back then, you know what I mean? But, but when we're with God, the law doesn't apply. When we're with God, the law doesn't apply to us. Because if we're living a good life, that law is there, but it doesn't apply to me. So on Saturdays, if I go through a checkpoint now, I'm all happy. Yeah. I even take my license out, my registration. And how you doing, Officer Gray? I'm having a great day. Yeah, how you doing? And it's awesome, man. But God's good, you know? Those are, those are the, the benefits of being with God and, and having God in our lives, man. Because I believe when I just seen a cop, I'm like, oh, no. You know? And it's, I mean, that's, it's true. I'm not going to lie. There's two different ways of living. Like, I love what Pastor says good choices, good life. Bad choices, bad life. Hey, Amen. I got a joke, okay? Okay. I love jokes. Okay, there was this girl that she's always wanted to be a model. And she, and she hit the lotto. So she's like, oh, dang, I hit the lotto. So, she, she, so then she went to Texas because she wanted to get a body like a, a model. She wanted to get a, you know, like a Cindy Crawford. I don't know if you guys know Cindy Crawford, but it's, <laughs> you know, she wanted to be like a model like Cindy Crawford. So she, went, she flew to Texas. <laughs> and she gets her, the, and then she signs up. She goes, she sees the doctor. She goes, yeah, doctor. I want to get a body like Cindy Crawford, but I got money. Don't worry about it. I'll pay. He was one of the best doctors that you could see. She goes, okay, but you got to do what I do. It's something new. And she goes, he goes, yeah, I want you to start eating through your butt and go into the restroom through your mouth. And it's just a joke. It's a joke, okay? So she goes, okay. He goes, and come back in a month. So then she goes, okay. She flies back to L.A. A month later, she goes back, and she goes and signs the re with the receptionist, and she's moving like this. She's like, and then she signs, and then she goes to the corner. She's like, moving and moving and moving. And then the, the receptionist goes and tells the doctor, hey, man, something's wrong with that girl from L.A. She's over there moving strange. So the doctor goes up to her and says, hey, are you okay? She goes, oh, yeah, I'm just chewing gum. <laughs> That's just a joke, okay? All right, if you have your Bibles, put them over your head and say, this is my Bible. I can have what it says I can have. I can do what it says I can do. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I'm ready to receive the infallible word of God. And having received the word of God, I will do the word of God. <laughs> okay. Right, so um, I've got a couple announcements to make. <clears throat> How many watch the Daily Hope broadcast at 10 o'clock? Raise your hand high if you watch the Daily 
broadcast at 10 o'clock. So proud of you. How many of you know that if you can't make it at 10 o'clock, you can still watch it because it's recorded. So, um, But I encourage you, um, we read a chapter in the New Testament Monday through Friday called The Daily Hope. Sometimes we don't get through our chapter, but we always hear from God. Amen. And so that is a ministry that has started um, when COVID started. We felt like the Holy Spirit directed us in that direction to do that. So that's what we're doing, and it is awesome. Um, watch the Daily Hope broadcast Monday through Friday at 10 a.m. If you can't make it at 10 a.m., when you get home, you can watch it because it's recorded. We are live on Facebook page, but we'll be switching to YouTube to YouTube live on Monday, June 14th. So Pastor, what does that mean? I'm not sure. But what? We're, we're switching to a different app, okay? Um, you can find our YouTube page by searching Hope CTV. CCTV. Hope CCTV. All right? If that doesn't make sense, uh, after we dismiss, ask Joaquin. He'll explain it to you. Joaquin, can they still watch us? Can they go to um, discoverhope.us and, and why, or do we stream that or no? The link will be there for the YouTube channel. Okay. So we'll exp just specifically be on the YouTube channel then? Okay. So make sure, because if you're doing it the old way, you're fine on June 13th, but June 14th you'll be messed up. So... If you have questions, go see Joaquin. He'll help you out. But it's really important you get plugged in because I'm telling you what, every single day at 10 o'clock, I sense in a powerful way the just anointing of God. It's just, it's so cool. All right. And then, um, of course, um, Granny's memorial service is this Saturday, this Saturday right here. So um, everybody's invited. Um, if you're bringing something, go see Pastor Laura, um, and she'll go over details with you. Okay? All right. You got your Bibles? Okay. I'm not going to tell you a joke, okay? So <laughs> turn to John chapter 1, John chapter 1. And what we're going to be doing, what we're going to... Um, What we're going to be doing is just reading verse by verse and then talking about the verses and uh, just a very um, traditional Bible study. But I'm telling you what, it is going to be so good. And this book, John, is phenomenal, just phenomenal. You know, John um, was the disciple that Jesus loved. Did you know John was the disciple that Jesus loved? Okay. Do you know who said that? John said that, okay? So John had, John understood. Yeah, obviously John had, you know what? John has a sense of humor, does he not? But he's also telling the truth. You know, if I say, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm one, I, I'm, I'm, you know, God loves me. That's telling the truth, right? Because God does love me. And that's what John was saying, Um so, and do you know John was the only disciple that, that, that died of old age, that wasn't martyred, was the only one. And they tried to kill him, but uh, they boiled him in oil, but he wouldn't cook. <laughs> so, so God had, anyway. And, and then, of course, um, John wrote Revelation, and, and uh, first and second, third John. So, um, written a lot in the New Testament. And um, so we're in John chapter 1, verse 1. Uh, we're reading out of the New King James. If you don't have that version, that's okay. But we'll have it up on the screen that you can follow us word for word. Um, and I'd encourage you to get a New King's version because it's the version that we use. And it's a little easier to study. We're going to be studying verse by verse. So I'd encourage you to get that um, version. <clears throat> um, can I say one more thing? I'd also encourage you to get a 
Bible that's a book. Do you understand? It, it's not saying that, that you say, well, what's my Bible? This is my Bible. And that's okay if you do that. And certainly um, for many of you, particularly if you're younger, this is the Bible that you predominantly use. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. But I would also encourage you to get a Bible that is um, you can open that's a book because uh, books are cool. Pastor Bradford taught me, um, just keep everything that you have. Because in 20 years, it's going to be in fashion again, okay? So pretty soon, book Bibles are going to be, you know. But um, all I'm saying is it's, it's really cool to have a book that you're studying, be able to underline, take notes, mark up your Bible. And I encourage you to mark up your Bibles and because um, it will be a blessing to you. All right, John chapter 1, starting with verse 1. John writes, in, be- in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Now, um, let me put that in context for a minute, and so you'll understand it. <clears throat> but if to understand it, if you can go down, go down to the 14th verse. Go down to the 14th verse. See what it says there? It says, and the Word was flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. We'll talk about that in a minute. And the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Okay. But here's what I want you to catch. And the word was flesh and dwelt among that, among us. Who's he talking about there? He's talking about Jesus. So now let's go back up to, to v- verse 1. Because, um, and most of you have read this a lot. Most of you have been taught this a lot. So you understand that John is talking about Jesus in verse 1. But he doesn't, he doesn't say that right away. Look what he says. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. What's he saying? He's saying, in the beginning, wait, wait you need to understand this. Jesus wasn't created. He was in the beginning. Okay, well, watch this. Well, when did it begin? Uh, There was no beginning. How can there be no beginning? (laughs) Well, understand this. God is outside of time. We're inside of time. So these concepts, how many know you can think about this till your brain hurts? Right? I mean, you can think about this all night tonight. You can think, when? Like a thousand years before, a thousand years, and a thousand years, and a thousand years, and a thousand years. And then, still before that, there was another thousand years. And then before that, what was there? Another thousand years. And you're like, oh, I don't understand it. Okay, well, when you, get to, when you get to heaven, you go, oh, I understand it now. Okay, but right now, there's concepts that are in the Bible, some that are like this. And because of who we are, we don't understand it all. Look at your neighbor and say, that's okay that you don't understand everything. Come on, that's okay. That how, how many how many know somebody that understands everything and they drive you crazy? Come on, does somebody know somebody like that? Is somebody sitting next to somebody like no, 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 no. Okay. But we 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 know people like that, and it's like, no, because what we know, we know that they really don't know everything. Is that not right? How many know? Here, let's be honest. How many know there's more things you don't know than what you do know? Come on, raise your hand if that's you. Okay. How many know there's, that is such an understanding. How many know there's way more things that we don't know than we do know? And concerning this, I'm not sure that at 4 o'clock in the morning, you're going to have any better understanding than you have at 3 o'clock in the morning. Okay? Because we are in time and God is outside of time. But it's interesting because if you read um, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, uh, they don't start their Gospels like that. They predominantly start their Gospels um, talking about the beginning of Jesus when he began on this earth when he was born in Bethlehem. But John wants you to understand something. Please understand that Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and John are all talking about Jesus' life. But Mark looks at it from this point of view. And Matthew looks at it 
from this point of view. And Luke looks at it from this point of view, and John looks at it from this point of view. Well, how many know by the time you're you're understanding those four uh, angles, you could get a pretty good perception of what this podium really is. Say amen if that makes sense. Where if watch this, if all we heard was from was from Matthew, how many know? Um, and, and Matthew is certainly inspired. The whole New Testament is inspired. But how many know the, the, the New Testament is inspired to say Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John? So we're getting a, a really good... See, if we didn't have John, we would have his perspective. And he's the only one that goes and says the same thing that that Genesis starts out with, in the beginning. Do you see that? So he's talking about, and, and, and what's his point? Well, I'll tell you his point. His point is, hey, guys, this Jesus didn't start as a baby like you and I started. That's not, that's not what happened. Jesus was with God in the beginning. He's been with God forever. And he wants you to understand. There's this, um, not that the other gospels don't have it, but there's this, I want you to understand Jesus' deity. Jesus is God. And I want you to get that. I want you to understand that. Um, I want you I want there to be a clarity. So because he wants us to understand that, he's saying he starts out by saying, "Guys, you know what? We can start this the story in in Bethlehem, but when the the story really started was you know what? In the beginning when God was with Jesus and God created, we'll see it in a minute, everything that was made, God created. And, and there's this reality that, um, and, and I understand this, because here's what the Bible says, that God is closer than a brother. How many of you, how many of you recognize, how many of you, Jesus is your friend? Raise your hand if Jesus is your friend. Okay, okay look at all the hands. It's just like, my friend, he's my best friend. How many of you understand Jesus gets you like nobody else gets you? And that's a wonderful thing. And that's true. But I think sometimes I heard uh, a guy say this, and I thought it was so good. Sometimes in our relationship with Jesus, um, I think we don't understand what a, um, I think sometimes he can be our buddy pal. And that's true. But let's make sure that he's not such our buddy pal that we don't understand. He is God. He, he created us. Does that make sense? So John wants us to understand that aspect, that Jesus is God. In the beginning, the Word, he's talking about Jesus, um, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Now, in, in uh, Philippians chapter 2, the Bible says, verses 5 through 8, the Bible says that Jesus emptied himself of all heavenly privileges. We'll, we'll see it in this chapter, how the Spirit of God rested and stayed with Jesus, the Bible says. Uh, but, and so we understand he emptied himself of all heavenly privileges. But you can empty yourself of all heavenly privileges and still be God. Does that make sense? So, that's what Jesus did. Verse 2. He was in the beginning with God. Jesus was forever and ever and ever with God. Verse 3. All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. Now, interesting how John says this. Because he's going to say this two ways. He's going to say, everything was made by Jesus, and... Nothing 
was not made without Jesus. Do you see how clear he's being? He's not just saying God made everything. He says, watch how he writes it. All things were made through him and without all things, all things were made uh, through him. I, I love the word of God because it does this over and over again. It, it repeats itself. It says things and makes such clarity in what he's saying. So he says, all things were made through him. But then he says, and without him, nothing was made. Nothing was made. Uh, the Hebrew says, um, no thing. No thing. Not little any bunny rabbits. Not no chickens. Not no people. Not no moon. Not no stars. Nothing was made except that Jesus made it. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. Let's, let's, let's park it here for a minute. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. Here, here's sometimes we can read this and say, oh, yeah, Jesus was alive. No, that's not what he's saying. He's saying, in him was life, and the life was the light of men. I worked in the grocery store for many, many years. And when I would work in the grocery store, sometimes I think because people's busyness. But I think sometimes just because of people's carnality. See, how many know you can be breathing and not excited about life? So you're alive, but there's, watch this, but there's no light in you. Um, I, I preached a sermon recently, and I talked about how evil secularism is and how we need to be careful as a church to just accept a secular anything. God should be part of everything in our life. And so um, I worked in the grocery store, and there's these people that would, you know what, they're buying groceries. I know, obviously, I know they're alive. I know they're, they're, they're walking, they're breathing, they're buying groceries. But when I would say, um, um, you know, did you find everything all right? They would look. You, you, ever, you ever see these movies? I know you, you all don't watch these movies, but you ever see these movies and they have these people and they're walking, but they're not alive? What do we call those people? Zombies, zombies or, or mummy zombies. You know what? And they're, they're like walking, but they're the, they're the walking dead. Have you ever heard that? They're the walking. Well, the truth is, how many, how many, how many have been around some people, and and this is, sounds negative, but how many recognize we have the Walking Dead r around us sometimes? Why? Because, because Jesus, in Him was life, and the life was the light of men. You take that light, you take Jesus. Think about this: what do what do people have without Jesus? I mean, what is motivating them? What is life about without understanding he created us? And so John is pointing out, let me tell you who Jesus is. Jesus, in him was life. In him there's this quality life. And the life was the light of men. People, here, let's, let's get in the positive. You ever known someone and they're real close to God? And you want to be close to them? You ever known anybody like that? Okay. Look at your neighbor and say, I hope you're like that. See, we, we ought to have so much God in us that people are just like, ah. When I was a, when I was a children's pastor, um, uh, Tamara and I just had a, a wonderful Ministry when when we were under Pastor Bradford and we were children's pastors, and um, and we had a lot of volunteers because with a lot of kids, how many know you need a lot of volunteers? Okay, can I take a commercial break right now? Okay, commercial break. Uh, we're going back to two services. I'm not sure. Um, the target date was originally August 
or uh, July 11th. I think that's going to be pushed out a little bit. But here's what I just want to tell you. We need you to, we need every single one of you to sign back up. How many know you can get sometimes uh, used to um, the easy life? Okay. And, and we have gotten used to one service, the usher serve, we just kind of, you know what, Josh and Pastor uh, Shayla and Pastor Joel and the staff kind of run things, and it's kind of cool. You're like, you know what, but can I tell you what's cooler? Coming to church and not just hearing the Word of God, but then doing the Word of God. How do we do that? We come and we listen to the Word at 9 o'clock, and then after we're done, then we go and serve the 8-year-olds or the four-year-olds, or the preschool, or the whatever age. Does that make sense? Or we're done and we help fry a burger or whatever we're doing. We're, we're part of the solution. Somebody say, I'm part of the solution. Okay, so, um, so you're sitting and serving. You're, you're part of the solution. But here's the thing. As God brings this life. Freely you have received, freely give. And so what happens is now you're not just to hear the word, now you're do of the word. Now you, listen, guys, we should have so much God in us that we want to be part of the solution. We want his life is not, we, we, don't, we don't just want to be served. Now we want to help serve. What's that? That's this light that's coming in, and you know what it's doing? You know what the light does? Uh, Carlos was talking about police and being pulled over and that stuff. You remember this? Uh, and some of you might be able to relate, or maybe you have friends that can relate, okay? And you get pulled over, and what, I mean, they got the, the red lights flashing, but then they got this bright light. What are they doing? They're lighting up what might be hidden. Shake your head like this if that makes sense. Okay. Because that's what the light does. Well, that's what, that's what Christ does. He comes and he, watch this, and he not only brings life that you cannot be so dreary and drab and, you know what, ooh, you know what, but, but now you can be optimistic. How many know Jesus should be bringing optimism in your life? But you know what else he brings? He brings light. Now, how many know that's not a bad thing? That's a good thing. How many know, how many ever pulled out your refrigerator from where it's been for eight years? Okay. You ever done that? Okay. Or maybe cleaned your refrigerator. Don't, don't, don't shut me down when I'm preaching good. And you're like, oh, this is a mess. Okay. How many know it's good to clean your refrigerator? Okay. And so that's what Jesus is. He brings life, but he also brings light. And that light is that you would see things in your life. How many old enough to recognize sin doesn't help you? It hurts you. Unforgiveness doesn't help you. It hurts you. Selfishness, greed doesn't help you. It hurts you, right? And so God wanting to help us, he brings revelation to us and he brings that light and he says, oh, okay, look at over here. And sometimes that's messy. Sometimes it's like, ah, but if we'll be obedient to take care of those things, you know what? The Bible says, repent, repent that times of refreshing might come. So times of refreshing come. So the, that's, who, that's who Jesus is. Verse 5, and the light shines in darkness. Oh, you see it right there? And the light shines in what? Darkness. Why? Because that darkness is jacking up your life. That darkness is making your life miserable. But that light shines in the darkness, and the darkness, watch this, and the darkness... Um, uh, did not comprehend it. How many know there are so many people back then and still now, and they don't comprehend the love of God? They don't comprehend it. They will see it in a minute. They, they choose not to comprehend it. Verse 6, 
There was a man sent from God whose name was John. This man came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all through him might believe. What's God's will? God's will is that all believe. Amen? Not that some God would want, the light is there. Anyone who wants to receive Jesus can receive Jesus. Verse, uh, verse 8. He was not the light, but sent to bear witness of the light. John the Baptist wasn't the light, but he was to bear witness of the light. Verse 9. That was the true light which gives light to every man coming into the world. Verse 10. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, and the world did not know him. Verse 11. He came to his own, and his own did not receive him. Who's that talking about? It's talking about the Jewish people. Jesus came, remember, of, um, I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of salvation, first to the Jew and then to the Gentile. So he came, he was, Jesus was Jewish, he came from the line of David, and he came, and his, his, his first thing, he had to start, somebody, some, somebody say, he, he's got to start somewhere. So he starts there, and many of the, the very people that he came for, they rejected him. Um, verse 12, but as many as received him, Excuse me. As many as received him, to them he gave them the right to become children of God to those who believe in his name. Catch this. I alluded to it earlier, but watch this. But as many as who? Receive him. As many as receive him. We'll talk about what he did, but as many as receive him. You know, God is knocking at the door. Whose door is he knocking at? Every person who's born on this earth. Well, yeah, but I know people in, and I, I know of people in this. What, what about these people in, in some off land that haven't even heard about Jesus? You know, it's funny how people want to bring up things that are completely irrelevant to them. They're bringing up something that's completely irrelevant to them. In America, everybody's heard about Jesus. How I many know oh, everybody's had many chances to hear about Jesus? Okay. And you're going to do with Jesus what you want to do. Either you're going to receive Jesus and say, Jesus, you need to be part of my life. And let me tell you about Jesus for a minute. To receive Jesus, this is really important. Because growing up in the Baptist church, I learned so many great things, great truths in the Word of God in the Baptist church. But there were some things that I learned that weren't accurate. And one of those things were that if you received Jesus, you know what? You could receive Jesus at junior high camp and ask Jesus in your heart. And then when you went back home and you were tempted in different ways and you could start running around with the same crowd, start doing the exact same things that you used to do and not care a hoot about Jesus, but you had that experience in junior high. Listen, very sadly, I know people that were raised in the Baptist church that I was raised in. And if I asked them, you know what, um, are you going to heaven? They would immediately say, absolutely, I'm going to heaven. And if I asked them, why are you going to heaven? They'd say, because in 1973, I accepted Jesus in my heart. Okay. But are you serving God? Here, let me, let me give you one. And people don't like to talk about this because they're like, ah, that's a, that's a, you, don't, you don't have to go to church to love God. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, let's see. Let's see. Where, where did you find that? So weird, because I didn't find that anywhere here. You know why? Because it's not there. How many know Jesus is our example? How many know Jesus went to temple all the time? How many know temple was his church? 
How many of the apostles went to temple all the time? All the time. How many know people? This is deep. This is really deep. How many know people who like to bowl? You know what? Where, where are you going to find them? Bowling alley. You know what I mean? I, listen, how many like to, how many really, really, do I have any people really, really like to bowl? A lot. You, you are like, okay, nobody in the house, okay? So one person, okay. You like to bowl, okay. Do you, were, you, were you ever part of a bowling league? You were part of a bowling league. When you were part of, of a bowling league, and I don't, I don't know what she's going to say. Who knows what she's going to say? But when you were part of the bowling league, if I came over to your house, could I open up maybe your closet or something? And could I look down and find a bowling ball? Two bowling balls. <laughs> Two of them. I imagine maybe a pink one even. I don't know. No. Well, a blue one. Okay. A blue or, okay. Here's my, here's my point. Okay, here's my point. My point is that, how many know that makes sense? See, what, what, I'm, what I'm pointing out to you is that to, to really receive God is to accept Jesus in your heart. And to accept Jesus in your heart, he starts changing. You don't have to be perfect right away. You're not going to be perfect right away. Maybe some of you have been saved for many, many years, and you're still not perfect, right? How many of you are still working on yourself? Come on, is somebody still working? We're still working on ourselves, okay? But how many of you, how many, you, here, proof, you're working on yourselves. That's why you're here today. You love God. You love the worship of God. It's not something superficial. It's not, you listen, you didn't have a friend who had a friend who, who you know what, invited you to an angel game. And you're like, oh, you know, and you're, you're, you're not there. And you, you, you see, you know, you know these people, and, they, and they're like at the angel game, and they buy one of those big... Um, Big foam fingers that say we're number one. Okay. No, no, you're not that person. You know what? You're like, oh, I want one of those fingers. You know what I mean? And then you go home and you put it in your closet. And eight years later, the foam's all falling apart. And you got to vacuum the rug. You're not that kind of person. Because let me tell you what. When you really receive Jesus, he really comes in your heart. And there's really something going on. It's not a superficial thing. It's something that is real. And you, and watch this, watch this. And you not only love, you say, somebody said, well, yep, I love God, but I love God. Okay, that's deep, right? But if you love God, you're going to love the things that Jesus loves. You're going to love the things that the Father loves. Here, this is deep. Who does the father, who does the, who, here, this is deep. Who is the son going to marry? This is deep. The church. We are his bride. How, I'm telling you what, Jesus is crazy in love with the church. You know why, you know why the father sent his son? The father sent his son because he was so in love with his creation, with the one that Jesus created. And so he sent his son because we needed a redeemer. Jesus is our savior. We needed a savior. So the father, God loves us so much, he's going to send his son. Why did Jesus go to the cross? Why? Because he loves us so much. He loves the body of Christ. I've told you this. You know what? When Tamara and I were first dating, she would turn it to a country station, and I would think, what in the world is wrong with you? <laughs> True story. And then, and then, and then I went, and then I, I visited um, her family in Chicago, and they were really crazy. How many know there's country and then there's country? Right? And her dad and mom owned a deli, and I would go over the deli, and they were listening to country. And I was like, what?
what is in the world is wrong with her? I hated the twang. I hated, I hated, I hated a lot of it. But anyway, um, but I mean, no, now, you know what? She can get in the car and turn on a country station, and I like it. Amen? Amen? I, 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 sometimes I think they talk about alcohol too much, but I still, hello. Why? Because, watch this, I love her, so I love what she loves. See, listen to me, I, and I don't know whom I'm speaking to. Maybe all I'm doing is, is, is telling you something that you know, and it's becoming more deep in your life. That's okay, too. But here's what I'm saying, that if you really love the Father, then you're going to really love the Son. And if you really love the Son, you're really going to love, watch this, not, you're really, gonna, listen, I don't, I, I mean, I, I thank God for the building. I thank God for the, for the, the church building. I thank God for our property. I thank God for the excellent spirit that we have. I'm so proud of, of, of this property. You know what? I have people who come up to this property and they say, wow, you know what? This is the most beautiful church, the most well-kept church I've ever seen. And I thank God for it. And excellence is our spirit. But when I drive to the church, you know what? That is to some extent superficial. What I really love isn't the church. It's the church. So I'll brag on John. I'm sitting here right before service, and John comes and sits next to me, and he kind of leans up against me and starts hugging me, and he says, ooh, I just want the anointing. Pastor, what did you do? I hugged him back and I said, yeah, and I'm going to get some anointing too. Because how many know I'm not the only one anointed a God in this place? And what's my point, man? See, how many know that is better than a nice building? How many know that is the church? See, this, you know, Tam and I love the church. And so when Jesus says, um, when Jesus says to us, when John says to us, but as many as received him, yeah, we'll, we'll just finish up with here, this. As many as received him, this is people that aren't making a casual decision. There's some of you might have come on a Sunday and you came and you heard the preaching of the word. And maybe it wasn't even in this church. Maybe it was a church somewhere else. But you heard not a, not a literal knocking. Jesus, when the Bible says Jesus knocks at your door of your heart, it's not like... Jesus? Is that you, Jesus? It's, it's, it, it's not that. It's him speaking many times through the pastor, through the preacher, and he's saying, hey, what he's saying is true. I really did die for you. Stop running your own life and give your life over to me. That's how Jesus knocks on the door. And watch this. And when you... Receive Jesus in your heart. Something happens. When, um, when, when I was with Pastor Bradford, and we were with Pastor Bradford for over five years, almost six years. And in Pastor Bradford's church, oh my goodness, if Pastor Bradford, is this not true? If Pastor Bradford saw me wearing flip-flops, he would, he would flip <laughs> And then he would flop. I mean, it would be, it would be, one time, it's a true story, one time uh, we, we wore, it was back in the day, it was when double-breasted suits were in. We had double-breasted suit, pocket square, our, our ties matched our pocket square, we, our shoes were shined. Uh, yeah, Pastor Bradford had cufflinks, but most of us couldn't afford to do that at that point in time. But anyway, 
But but we were we I mean we could you know get a suit and we could make sure our shoes were were shined. Well, I remember one time uh, I was in the kids ministry and and we, af, after after we had three services after three services was over, um, after we said goodbye and, and most of the people left, then we'd change. Why? Because we got to vacuum and clean the glass and clean the brass. And why? Because we had another service at 6 o'clock at night. So we would clean all the things. And so we'd change. in And, and one, one Sunday, everybody say one Sunday, one Sunday. Um, I was in my shorts and I was in my T-shirt. And boom, boom, boom. And they were doing a cantata, and cantata was crazy time. And so the kids came in early, and it, I was just busy, 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 and I didn't have time to change. Back into my suit. And guess what? After that night service, my pager went off. How many remember pagers? My pager went off, and it was like a like a 777 number. 777 meant pastor wanted us in our office, his office. And when pastor wanted us in his office, um, it wasn't like, okay, I'm going to, I need to change first. It was like he wanted us in our office five minutes ago. Okay. So I went up to the office and I walked in and he had this real plush, plush, plush um, carpet. And I walked in and, I, and we all sat down in these real nice uh, couches. And I sat down. And Pastor Bradford, I wish you, you knew Pastor Bradford. Pastor Bradford just, he was behind his desk. And he stood up and he did like this. And he said, uh, what, what are you wearing? And it wasn't a compliment that he was asking me what I was, where I got my cool looking shorts. And I was like, um, I am so sorry. Boom, boom, boom. And it just, it just wasn't, I mean, no, it wasn't a good day. Uh, the reality is, listen to me, the reality is God is looking for you to be part of the body. And, and we, we were there because we wanted to be there, because we loved it there. And so when God does something inside, he changes you, and you're changed. And I'm not saying you don't get perfect right away, but you start to get, it's called sanctification, you start to become perfect. Uh, guys in the back, go to the, go to the verse again. I want to finish off with this. Can you go back to the verse or no? They thought it was done. Twelve, thank you. But as many as received him, to them, watch this, he gave the right to become what? Let me just let that soak in a minute. When you receive Jesus, he gave you, he, are you kidding? He grafted you in to now you're part of his family. You're part of his family. Peter says this, first chapter, Peter says this, that we have been given um, the ability to walk in his divine purpose. Divine purpose. See, you go, you, you get born again, and you go from um, a creation of God to a child of God. Oh, yes, everybody is a child of God. No, 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 no. Everybody is not a child of God. Everybody was created by Jesus Christ. Everyone was created by Jesus Christ. Everyone God wants because of the sin of Adam and Eve we have been, we, sin came in. He wants to graft everybody in. He wants everyone back. That's why Jesus Christ went to the cross. 
But understand this, when you accept Jesus, you go into a whole different realm. You, you now are going to live forever with your heavenly Father. Hallelujah. Now, are you kidding me? The Bible says, Paul writes, you can, you know what? You're, now you can say, Abba, Father. What is Abba, Father? Are you kidding me? You know, how many know, you know, here, here, go, go to Washington, D.C. and go, go, go to the White House and knock on the gate and say, hey, can I, I, I want to talk to the president. You know what? There's some things that concern me and I want to talk to the president. How many know they're going to go? They're probably going to go, uh, um, code four on gate nine. How many know they're probably going to do that? Because they're going to think, who in the world thinks they can go to Washington, D.C. and knock at the gate and think they're going to be able to talk to the president the same day? Are you kidding me? How many know you could go every day and probably never have an opportunity to meet with him or talk to him? Or he's not going to, oh, you're from California. What's your name? Oh, you're from California. You're told, oh, you're a Raider fan. How many know that is highly unlikely that's going to happen? You know, maybe if the politician is running for government, you know, you might be able to, to see him far from a, if you go to a, a, a rally or something. But, you know, or exactly, or in a fundraiser, if you want to go to Hollywood and spend $10 million and get a plate, he might come by and shake your hand. And I hope you enjoy that steak, amen? But I guarantee it's not worth $10 million. Do you understand what I'm saying? But God, yes. how many know God is the one who, <laughs> there is no higher than God. That's right. Amen. There it is. And God says, you know what, you, you're my child. Listen, uh, how many know Tyler has my phone number? How many know Megan has my phone number? How many know Megan calls me you know, she called me the other day. You know what? And she's like, hey, Dad, you know what? What are you doing? Well, sweetie, I'm a little busy right now. Okay. Well, I was just wondering, can you go by Starbucks and get me, get me a latte? <laughs> How in the world? What does she think? Here. And, and it did, uh, I'm sorry to say it didn't happen that day. But guess what? Most days, guess what's going to happen? True story. I just, I just was so busy, I forgot. But how many know most days, um, I'm coming in with the latte. Okay. Why? That's my daughter. Okay. And, and, and what am I? I'm a carnal dad. I'm not a perfect dad. How many know our father is perfect? There's not a day, there's not a time, there's not a moment, there's not at four o'clock in the morning. God doesn't rest. There's no, he's not too busy for you. Why? You're his child. To, to as many as received him. Those, oh, I don't got time for God. God's like, okay, well, I'm not going to force myself on you. But to those who receive him, to them he gave the right when you accepted Jesus in your heart, he said, you get the right. You got my ear. You cry out to me. I hear you. You know what? And you're my child. Can't talk. Don't know about the president. Don't know about the senator. Don't know about the governor. Can't talk about that. But I can talk about me. You are my attention now. Hallelujah. Is that amazing? Is that amazing? Hallelujah. All right. Well, 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 we'll, we'll learn some more next week. Amen. Okay. And here's what we're going to do. Every week, we're just going to open up John and we're just going to read and read and read. Oh, wait till, wait till you see what's going on next week. It's going to be good. Okay. Can I pray with you? Father, I thank you for these who have come today. I thank you for their willingness, not just to come Sunday, but to come Sunday and Wednesday. Father, may the rest of the week, may we enjoy our relationship with you. 
May we take advantage of your willingness that you draw us close to you. May we cry out to you. May we, may we understand how much you love us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen, amen. Okay. Amen. Tamara and I love you. So proud of you. Honey, you, want, you have anything to share? No? Okay. Let me, uh, let, me, let, me, let me share one more thing with you, Wednesday group. There are people that come Wednesday. It's easier to get them to come Wednesday than it is Sunday. You know that? And here's why. Because Sunday is Sunday. But Wednesday, it's kind of, they just feel like it's more casual, uh, less, people, less people looking at them. How many know sometimes people are like standoffish? What am I saying? I'm, I'm telling you, we have all kinds of people. The first service they come is a Wednesday. Now we have some people, first service they come is Sunday. But many people, they feel more comfortable coming to a midweek service than they will a Sunday service. Why I say that? Because I want you to invite people. You have two, here's your assignment. I'm going to give you two assignments. Number one, invite people that don't have a church. Amen? Number two, invite people. Listen to this whole thing before you judge it. Invite people that come on Sunday, but they don't come on Wednesday. And just graciously invite them to be part. You know, hey, Wednesday is awesome. You give the testimony, okay? All right, okay. Will I see you tomorrow at 10 o'clock? Okay. Invite somebody to be with us. We love you and God's love you. Want to remind you this. Want to remind you this. At Hope, help me preach this. What's our heart? People are our heart. What's generosity? It's our opportunity. What's, what's, uh, what's our spirit? Excellence. Excellence is our spirit. What's our favorite? Smiling. Smiling is our favorite. And who's our Lord? Jesus. And Jesus Christ is our Lord. We love you and God love you. You're dismissed. We'll see you Sunday. Amen.